This video is sponsored by Intego's Mac Premium Bundle X9. So I've been using Mac OS Big Sur, and I will tell you, it is a Big Sur. There's a lot of good, there's some bad, and there's some ugly, but mainly good, but also some bad and ugly that I wanna talk about. So if you guys are excited <laughs> for the video, drop a like down below to seriously help me and the channel out, and hit subscribe for more. All right, I'm Sam, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right guys, so let's start off with the good stuff, then we'll get into the more, you know, more controversial takes, the hot stuff for Mac OS Big Sur. But there is so much good here. I am absolutely blown away as to what Apple's done here. It is my favorite Mac update, honestly, that I think I've ever seen since I've been alive, which is only 22 years, but, if you sat in a room for 22 years, it'd feel like a long time, and that's where I feel like Mac OS has been. It's just, it's been in a box, and it's finally broken free. I love the new UI here. It is so nice and so clean, and we'll get into some of the bad parts of that a little bit later on in the video, but by and large, I think it's the update that the Mac needed. It was stuck in this weird, like, old Mac UI mixed with some iOS 7 design takes, and it wasn't fully there. Now they've committed, and I mean, everything from the subtle interactions of more blur, more translucency, uh, the redesigns and all of the applications, the fresh icons, it is a fresh coat of paint, and especially with Apple's big transition to ARM Max, I mean, you kind of needed this if you're gonna really use your own hardware now. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited for the future of the Mac. I'm happy, I'm happy that it's still its distinct platform too. I'm happy that Apple is not combining iOS and macOS together because this seems like the best possible way to do things. I gotta give the camera a hug for this one because messages is not bad anymore. And you know that something's a long time coming whenever most people are describing it as not bad anymore. Like that's never a good way to start a conversation about something. But until now, the Messages app needed that criticism. But finally, it supports all the great things that your iPhone supports. It's got Memoji stickers. Woohoo. But also the more frequently used fun stuff like iMessage effects, you can actually see those as they play out. It's not in a sad pair of parentheses any longer. And it feels so much more responsive. Like it, it feels like a messaging app should. Sending messages feels smooth and slick and instant like it has since iMessage has been on the, on the iPhone. But it's never been a priority on the Mac, so it was always in a weird, like, it works, but it's not optimized. Now it's optimized and it's fantastic. So far, we also got some weirdly huge upgrades, and I don't know how you could rationalize using Chrome anymore. I mean, I have it on my dock, as you might be able to see behind me, but now it loads like 50% faster in a lot of cases, and the JavaScript is twice as fast as in a lot of places. I don't know how they've done it, but whatever the Safari team has been up to, it has been really good. And then you got the native translation from the iPhone as well, just in a snap. Instantaneously, you can read a web page that you couldn't read before because it's in a different language that you don't know. It's really, really cool. And, you know, the nice subtlety of a start page image, it's pretty nice. And uh, it's not going to like enhance your experience that much, but I do like it. It's nice that it's there. They also remixed all the sounds. Uh, remix meaning some of them are tweaked just a little bit, some of them are remastered, others are completely different. Like the empty trash sound, I was like, Whoa, am I getting sucked into the vacuum of space out here? Because I don't know what's about to happen. I think it's important to note here that the UI is like what we're seeing, the physical interface, but the UX is a little bit different. I think a lot of people don't talk about sound when you talk about what it's like to experience an interface, and Apple has nailed that here. Uh, I'm telling you, 75% of what I enjoy is the visuals. I like the new icons. I like the addition of blur in more places. Everything is really responsive and it just looks fresh. The other 25% is when I click on something and it lets me know that I'm not supposed to click there or I get feedback when I uh, am emptying the trash or when I, I reload something. It, it's nice. I really, really like what they've done here and I haven't seen many people talk about it. The new sounds are, they're like the cherry on top of everything else. And they brought the startup sound back, which is really dope. I knew I was gonna like it when when I was looking at this computer and, and over on another table, I was updating my MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is what I've been using this on. And out of nowhere, I heard the Mac startup sound and the nostalgia hit real hard. And two more things to round out the good. Love the new wallpapers. They're really fresh, especially this one behind me. I've actually got links to them all over on my site. So I'll leave a link down below. And number two, it's so stable. I, I don't know how it's this stable for all the UI changes that they've made for all the, the visible improvements here and it works really well. I'm not telling you to install it on your Mac. Like a lot of things are not going to work properly. That's just a, a general disclaimer for any beta software. But from what I've experienced so far, I could change in the future with a new beta update, but in beta one, I, I don't know what to say. Like I feel like they could have shipped this essentially and I'd be like, Okay, works pretty well. All right, moving on to the bad. I said there was a counterpart to the UI comments I made, and there definitely is. I like that Apple has taken flat design to another level here. I like a lot of the interface, 
But personally, after seeing what has happened since iOS 7, not only is the entire industry changed to just be flat and essentially detail absent, Apple's left some of it here, which I appreciate. Like I like that the icons have objectively more detail than they do on iOS, but there's still parts of the interface where I wish there was more. I wish there were, were more layers. I wish there were more dots or subtleties here. Uh, there's this idea of new morphism, which is a blend between flat design and traditional iOS 6 type skew morphism. But honestly, this is a visual thing. It's not gonna be that big of a deal if it doesn't end up changing. And I have a feeling that Apple's pretty set on the direction that they took here. With that being said, I noticed that Apple made essentially all the icons look like they could work on the iPhone. And while I think that's a really good idea for a, a traditional home screen, Screen. To me, it doesn't make as much sense on the dock. I liked the individualism that every icon and shape could have. I don't think they had to choose the rounded rec for every single app now. But then they're like, well, on a couple, we're gonna break that rule. We're gonna put a little thing in the bottom right or bottom left-hand corner to let you know that this is a Mac icon. And personally, I like the way that looks better. I wish there was more depth, as I mentioned, you know, about the UI in general. But for the icons, it's like, why are some breaking the rules? You know, what is the uniform design language that developers even should be going for? Because it's not clear to me right now. Now, something else that Apple still hasn't added is like best in class virus scanning software or a way to clean your Mac or a way to do a bunch of other great stuff that you don't normally think about that you really should be doing. That's why I partnered up with Intego to tell you about their Mac premium bundle X9. Inside of the bundle, there's five. Count it one, two, three, four, Five, I can still count apps in the bundle. The first one is called Net Barrier. This is network protection for your computer, protecting it from unauthorized access. Really cool interface with incoming and outgoing here that you can block at any time. Next up is Content Barrier, which allows you to control what your kids are up to and also see what they've been up to while they're using the computer. Personal Backup App, make sure that no matter when disaster strikes, you're gonna have everything backed up properly as it should be so you don't lose all your important stuff. Washing Machine is a cleaner for your Mac. The most satisfying of the bunch for me because it allows you to find duplicates and clear up space on your hard drive. And perhaps the most important one of the bunch here, Virus Barrier. It's award-winning antivirus software. Intego has been making their Mac product software from the ground up since 1997. So you guys can get all this for 50% off right now. What? Yeah, 50% off using the link down below in the description. Hey, your Mac just got the visual overhaul it has been begging for for years with Mac OS Big Sur. Now give it the back-end overhaul to make your Mac run better than it's ever run. But the biggest part of the bad for me is just how Catalyst apps don't feel that good still. I was hoping there would be some major revamp with the UI overhaul. They still feel like they're essentially iPad apps and iPhone apps on the Mac. And I feel like with the team of engineers the size that Apple has, they could have just made native Mac interfaces using the underlying code that they have on iOS. Cause I love the idea. I love that the app on my iPhone, I can run on all my devices whenever I want. It's a cool concept, but it just feels cheap and underdeveloped when I use it on the Mac. Like it works, Apple News, podcasts. I get my stuff on here and I like that I can finally get that on my Mac. It just doesn't feel as good as Final Cut Pro, an app made by Apple or Safari. And that's the weirdest part to me. The new messages and maps apps that are made using an updated Catalyst framework, they feel really good. But as soon as I go to news or stocks specifically, it, it feels like they just didn't try. It was like, uh, people kind of want this, so we're gonna throw it on here. So Apple has this framework and sometimes they use it and other times they're just like, yeah, you know, we don't really care that much about this app. So we're just gonna throw it on there as is. And now moving on to the ugly stuff. Uh, Control Center, it's here, I don't get it. I like that they added some more cool looking toggles like when you click on Wi-Fi or when you click on Bluetooth, I love the way that updated interface looks, but needing a separate space on my Mac. Like the whole point of Control Center on the iPhone is that you've only got this much screen space so you can't display everything at once. On the Mac, you already constantly have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and you can tap on it and mess with it. Control Center, it's here. It doesn't do anything for me. If Apple would have skipped Control Center yet again, I would have said, cool because I wasn't gonna use it anyway. It also just feels like iOS. Like why are there little knobs on the sliders? That's to indicate that's where you slide with a finger. On a mouse, you don't need that. And you can't even scroll on the mouse right now to make the brightness or volume go up or down. And you can control the brightness on most Mac keyboards. So again, it's like, it just feels redundant. And it was like, iOS has this, so why not just bring it to the Mac too? Next up, listen, I'm all about nipples, guys. You know, everybody's got them. We gotta respect the nipple out here. But did we need it on the battery icon? A change that I'm not so sure we did actually need to see. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, you can't unsee it and it's, it's always looking right at you and it never stops its gaze. So will Apple change this? I don't know, but am I gonna be uncomfortable if it doesn't change? 
Yeah, absolutely. And third on the ugly section for me is widgets. They look beautiful because they're essentially copy and pasted from the iPhone. It's just that we had that old dashboard back in the day. Remember this? That Apple finally depreciated after such a long time. Well, they brought really good looking widgets back again. I know that the Mac always like had a lot of widgets and notification center, I just never use them. Like I can't think of a use case where I've ever gone to notification center and wanted to use a widget there. I mean, I, maybe weather, but I've got a watch or a phone. You can look it up online. It's just never had that much functionality for me. But again, I feel like they could have just skipped it and put the work into something else, like rounding out some more of the edges before putting out beta one. And you might've noticed, wait, uh, those criticisms at the end weren't even that severe. Like, why'd you even put them in there? That's to make a point as well, in addition to being honest with you, how I feel about the software, that Mac OS Big Sur is just that good. Like this is beta one. Apple's only gonna make it more stable, more efficient, more streamlined, and more visually appealing. Maybe even auditorily appealing as well. I just can't believe it's this good already. I feel like I'm reviewing the final version of it. It's amazing. Like even if the battery icon unjokingly never changes, I'm not gonna be mad. You know, it's really good. And I just keep thinking to myself, if this runs this well and looks this good and is this great already, on my Intel iMac or Intel MacBook Pro, what is it gonna be like when it's running natively on Apple Silicon? Because they showed some demos and I was impressed. So that's my early hands-on review of Mac OS Big Sur, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let me know your experience. What do you think was good? What do you think was bad? What do you think was ugly? Down below in the comment section. Don't forget to check out Intego's Mac Premium Bundle X9. Link is down below in the description. All right, that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did drop a like, hit subscribe for more. I'm Sam and I'll catch all of you in my next video.